What can we do naturally to protect and even improve the cellular health, elasticity and volume of our skin as we age without expensive clinical treatments? Well, one of the most promising options is heat shock therapy because it can kickstart repair and renewal processes in our skin and elsewhere in the body with a whole lot of benefits attached. I'm Claire Johnston, a journalist in my 50s and on a mission to help you and I age well, look and feel good for longer. So hit subscribe if you haven't already to join me on this journey and let's explore together now what heat shock therapy can do for our skin and wider health, the options for using it and just what I think it does for my own skin. So what do we mean by heat shock therapy? Well, when we put our skin under enough stress from a more intense heat, thought to be above around 40 degrees Celsius, we cause it to release some very helpful proteins called heat shock proteins that kickstart a defense mechanism prompting cells to go into repair mode. Now, we know that damaged proteins speed up the aging process and therefore the signs of aging on our skin and elsewhere in our bodies. And so we wanna do as much as we can to help repair them so they're not accumulating and clustering, which is what tends to happen more and more as we age. And these accumulated damaged proteins are linked to age-related disease and to the visible signs of aging on our skin. And so when our skins and our bodies are subjected to heat, the heat shock proteins are released as part of the protective mechanism. And scientists believe that those heat shock proteins stabilize damaged proteins and give cells time to repair or renew them. And the release of heat shock proteins is a big part of the reason why sauna bathing is thought to be so good for us, along with its cardiovascular effects. So a large study of more than 2,000 male sauna users in Finland carried out over a 20 year period found that those who used a sauna two to three times a week had a 24% lower risk of death over the study period. And those who used it four to seven times had a 40% lower risk of dying than those who went for one session a week. Spending 20 minutes in the sauna compared with 10 minutes also significantly reduced the risk of heart failure. Sauna therapy four to seven times a week was also found to reduce the risk of dementia and Alzheimer's by 66% compared to those who used the sauna once a week, so some big differences there. A scientific review paper published in 2018 by scientists in Melbourne, Australia, which analyzed 40 clinical studies concluded that heat therapy through sauna bathing can induce what they described as profound physiological effects. So by raising our core temperature, we activate something called our thermoregulating pathways through the hypothalamus in the brain, which controls our hormone system. And it leads to an increase in our heart rate, causes our blood vessels to dilate and sends our sweat glands into action. And this has multiple physical effects similar to exercise, including improving cardiovascular fitness and function, lowering blood pressure and helping us regulate blood sugar levels by increasing insulin sensitivity. For the skin, we have the double whammy of improved circulation and blood flow, helping deliver more oxygen and nutrients to skin cells, and those all important heat shock proteins having a collagen boosting and regenerative effect. So saunas, whether you're using a traditional one or an infrared sauna, it's one of the best ways to gain those whole body benefits of heat shock therapy, including to your skin. It's worth noting though, that saunas are not recommended in pregnancy and you should take medical advice before using them if you have a medical condition, including of course, heart problems. I use the sauna at my gym at least twice a week. I am actually looking into possibly getting one at home, but let's see. Um, and for now, I also use an infrared blanket at home too. But to add to the anti-aging skin benefits, I also use the Nera Pro laser every other day, precisely because it's designed to trigger the release of heat shock proteins in our skin by heating up the water in the dermis above the 39, 40 degrees Celsius point where heat shock proteins are thought to be released. And it uses a specific wavelength to heat just over that point and to depths of just under a millimeter into the dermis, so not very deep at all, where you should get the benefits without experiencing any pain. And, and that is true for me, certainly, of the Pro device. With the earlier precision model, I did feel some nippiness, some pain in the higher heat settings of the device. And I know that viewers have 
mentioned that to me as well, but I don't experience any discomfort with the Pro. So that is my preferred device from the Nearer range. I'll link to it below along with an interview that I did with the Nearer creator, David Bean, because I had so many questions around how it worked. And after that interview back in February, that was when I started using the Nearer Pro long-term every other day because that conversation told me a lot about frequency of use and it did allay a lot of the doubts I had around the device and how it worked. And I was comforted to know that it was only working at a superficial level in the skin because I was concerned about things like fat loss risk, which we do hear about relating to some other heat and also energy-based treatments in particular. So I use the Nera around my eyes, um, just under and above the brows and also the crow's feet area to the sides in my elevenses and then all the way up uh, to the top of my forehead too. And I take it down around the jawline and just under my chin as well. And I know people love a before and after photo. I love a before and after photo too, though they are fraught with issues because even a tiny difference in light, and I take my photos in natural light so you can see my lines clearly, but even minor differences can make a direct comparison tricky. That said, if you compare pictures of me from six months ago to this week, which were taken in very similar light, I haven't seen any signs of skin tightening, I'm afraid to say, or an eye lifting effect. But I do notice, and it was the same when I reviewed the Nero Precision a few years back, that my forehead lines are reduced. My deepest runs across the top of my forehead and I can see that there is a more obvious change there. And while I use a sauna primarily for whole body benefits, including to my skin, my greatest goal with something like the Nera is to slow skin aging and help maintain skin elasticity and volume for as long as I can. And when I looked at a photo that cropped up on my phone recently, taken five years ago, this time of year in 2019, I can see that my skin is in better shape today. It's healthier, better hydrated and less lined but it is still aging. The volume and elasticity will of course reduce over time. So that's why slowing it has got to be the goal. But what I also noticed looking back on some of those older photos is that my hair is bizarrely less gray now than it was then, uh, particularly around my temples. And I have myself asking, is that the heat therapy? Is it supplements? Is it the growth factors in my callus and moisturizer, which have been known to repigment hair? I think very likely it's a combination and improvements in my skin are also likely a combination of factors too. So I'll share a link below to a page outlining my full skincare routine, which is kept pretty simple and focuses on retaining moisture. So it's the combination of that and then using tools like heat from the Nera, the sauna, face massage that I covered recently on the channel to improve blood flow to the skin, a little microcurrent to help stimulate muscles and red light to energize skin cells. And these things I believe really do help along with, of course, good nutrition and strength building exercise. That is key. Worth mentioning as well, another option for treating just your face with heat and you could use something like a facial steamer. And I'm gonna to link to one from Panasonic in the description which is specifically designed to trigger the release of heat shock proteins through fine steam particles, which they say are better able to penetrate your skin. Steam rooms are less well studied when it comes to health benefits, but you are still heating your body and skin to temperatures that theoretically should trigger the release of heat shock proteins. And the great thing about saunas or steam rooms, if you have access to them, is they're heating the whole body and so you can enjoy head to toe benefits. Hot tubs are being explored for their health benefits too, and even hot baths, with a 2017 study showing that people who spent an hour immersed waist deep in water heated to 40 degrees Celsius saw between 23 to 39% increases in heat shock protein expression. Of course, it's possible to have too much of a good thing and the longer we spend in intense heat, the more we open ourselves up to dehydration and other issues. So like all things, it's about balance and finding the right and safe amount of heat for you if this is a route you want to go down and of course staying hydrated too. Heat can also have a drying effect on the skin and that's why I've adapted my skincare routine to preserve my skin's natural moisture and I lean a lot on oils to both protect my skin and keep it hydrated. 
So that's it from me on this subject, but if you're interested in all things relating to how to age well, look and feel good for longer, then you'll find more advice and information over on my website, honest.scot. Also linked in the description below, just click where you see more. You'll also find a link where you can sign up for my monthly newsletter, where I round up all my latest content so you won't miss a thing. And you can follow the Honest channel on the go now by listening to episodes on Apple Podcasts, and Spotify, as well as YouTube Music. But for now, thank you for being here today.